you really want to earn money, you can make a lot of money by programming. First name all the languages you know on okay. I know how to code in DOS, C Sharp, C++, Java, um, Basic, and I know how to do a lot of a few graphical programming environments. How did you learn how to to do all this programming? I mean, you just <laughs> I know it just didn't come. You had to start somewhere. Yeah. So in seventh grade, I was talking to my dad, and I was talking about how I was working on this project on the computer, and he says, "Well, why don't you learn how to program? Because that's something you can actually get a job with when you're older." <laughs> and so I was like. Oh, that's a good idea. So, after that, we were going out to eat or something. I can't remember the specifics, but I went home and I started looking up ways to make apps and how to program. And that's where I started learning how to make programs with command prompt in Windows. And I made all these stupid games like tic tac toe. And it was funny because I wrote this tic tac toe program. And the thing about tic tac toe is if you know what you're doing, you can write a program that will never lose. It will only either beat you or have a tie. And so I went to school and I was like, I bet you a dollar that you can't beat this program. <laughs> and the kids, they, they were like, oh, I'm so great at tic-tac-toe. And no, they weren't. My program was better. So how, many, how much money did you make from that? How many kids did oh, you Oh, probably like $10. Hey, that's, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. There you go. First start of, yeah. first start of money making yeah. programming. <laughs> What are some of the different tools you use to program with? Well, um, when I first started out, we already kind of talked about how I worked with command prompt in Windows. Mm -hmm. After that, after I got done with that whole tic-tac-toe deal and all those other really weird games, I got looking into making apps because that's a really good way to make money. I Definitely. mean, you hear about all these people that make loads and loads of money making apps. And for me, that never really went anywhere, because I didn't put a lot of effort into it. But if you put effort into it, you can definitely get somewhere. Totally. Making apps, you can make a lot of money. So, what I first started out with was this program called App Inventor, where rather than typing all this code, you can make these apps in like mm. 15 minutes. You really? can make an app in 15 minutes if you wanted to. And it wouldn't necessarily do a lot, but... You can make them really fast, and you can even just hook your phone up while you're making it and see it on your phone. Um, oh. And it's just like dragging puzzle pieces together. And uh, it's pretty it's, simple. It's pretty simple to learn. Um, something that we're doing right now in my computer programming class at school is called Scratch. It's another graphical environment, so <laughs> no, like coding where you're writing all these uh, words and stuff and all the special commands. You're just dragging pieces together. And Scratch is meant for making games. So if you want to start making mm. really simple video games, learn Scratch, because it's really easy to do even simple animations in Scratch. Mm, okay. um, and uh, I would highly recommend that if you have no programming experience whatsoever. I kind of started off in a really weird way, but if you have no experience programming at all, Start with Scratch, and from there, you can move into App Inventor, or Java, or C Sharp, or any of those other languages. Um, let's see, so, once I got done with those graphical languages, I started learning Java, and that is how most Android apps are written nowadays, mm. is in Java. And uh, games like Minecraft are also written in Java. And then, on the other hand, I'm school. The other languages, the other language that I would highly suggest learning is C Sharp, because that's another language that tons of games are written in, and apps and all kinds of other stuff. It's all written in C Sharp, and a lot of programs for your computer are also written in C Sharp. Isn't C Sharp for iPhones too? I believe so. I'm not entirely sure on uh, that. I think I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. So, um, you've got Java and C Sharp, those are both really good languages to learn. And there's a lot of games for, I believe, Xbox games are made in C Sharp now. 
So again, if you want to go into programming, learn Java or C Sharp, or just learn both, because they're both good languages to know. Yeah. And the more programming languages you know, the more likely a company is to hire you. And probably once you learn a couple, it's probably easy to learn some of yeah. the others because they're just slight variations, right? Yeah. And some, there are bigger jumps, but others, there aren't. Yeah. And if you have a Nintendo DS or a, a Nintendo 3DS or a DSi, you can get this uh, game called Petite Computer. And with it, you can code in BASIC. Now, BASIC is an, basic is an interesting language. It's like 20 years old and nobody uses it anymore. But it's also what you can program graphing calculators with. And I've written a few programs on here that do my math homework for me. And the <laughs> teachers let me use them on the test. And I can't guarantee that'll work for you. But it's also, you know, if you're learning Java and C Sharp, you do kind of learn just how coding in general works. Because no matter what language you're working with, like you said, mm -hmm. there are similarities. So right, right. if you're already learning Java and C Sharp, this is a great one to just mess around with. And you can make your own games for this, which is really cool. How much was the app for the game? It was that? seven or eight bucks. So nothing oh, all that much. And you can go online and you can get programs that other people have written. And you can look through them and figure out how they work. Like, I found this really cool game. It was an adventure game. And I just kept dying, so I went into the editor, edited the code, and gave myself 50 lives. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. You can like learn and also have a lot of fun with that, playing all those other little games mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah, because lots of people have made other games, and some people have made these massive games that are thousands and thousands of lines of code. Mm -hmm. They've got these great-looking graphics. And so even if you don't want to necessarily get this game for coding, it's still fun to have just to play all the games other people have made. So what are some of the projects that you've done? Like, um, He does a lot with electronics and stuff as well. And so he uses computer programming skills and he solders and makes electronic things to do certain things that he wants. This is the Raspberry Pi. It's a $35 computer that I got for Christmas last year. And it's unique in that it runs Linux and it's so small. And I mentioned Linux earlier about how learning Linux can help you get a job in the future. And this is a great way to learn Linux because um, it takes a lot of practice to get to the point where you can use it every day and do all kinds of stuff. I've done Minecraft servers on this Raspberry Pi. That took quite a bit of trial and error to get all the settings just right, get everything working. Um, let's see. So with this, you programmed uh, the Doctor Who. Yeah. The Doctor Who one, right? Yeah. Tell us a little about that. So this last March, for my friend's birthday, they're a huge Doctor Who fan. I got thinking, oh, what can I make? So after probably a few hours of just thinking on and off, what could I make? I came up with this idea that I could make the sonic, a sonic screwdriver, which is, for, in the TV show, it's like a remote that controls absolutely anything. Door locks, um, computers, TVs, you name it. And, of course, for putting in screws. So I made... <laughs> Uh, I decided, what if I made one that was a remote for every single TV? And so I started doing some research into that. Somebody had already made a piece of code that would turn off any TV as long as you had the circuit connected to the microcontroller just right. And so I needed to program that microcontroller. And again, I used this. And because I had been learning Linux, I was able to do that. Um, and this little remote thing I made, I could have easily sold it for 40 or $50, and it only cost me, like, 30 to make. And I probably could have sold it for much more if I wanted to, because custom projects like this, they go for a lot, where if it takes a lot of skill to make this. Oh, and totally. If you start now, you can, you can easily get there. You can easily get to the point where you can make stuff like this. And 
I didn't, again, I didn't really use this as a money-making opportunity. Most of the money I make is by fixing computers, but that's just yet another way to do it, is make these little gadgets. With the Doctor Who thing, this screwdriver, what what are some fun things you guys did? I, you were telling me earlier yeah. a little about some fun things. We went to things. Costco and turned off all of Costco's TVs. <laughs> we ran around turning them off. Just, yeah. You, you just pointed at it and hold down the button. <laughs> Lastly, one of my more current projects that I decided to start working on about a month ago now was this rocket I'm building. I'm building this big rocket. It's going to be like three inches in diameter, and it's going to be probably about a yard long. Now, I decided it'd be really cool if once I get this rocket finished, if I take and I put this little microchip inside and it will measure how high the rocket goes and I'm gonna write some code and this one is made by Texas this board is made by Texas Instruments you program it in a version of C using uh, this software called Energia I believe and I can write code for it and I can hook up like an altimeter a sensor that measures how high the rocket is and I can put this in the nose cone and it'll tell me how high my rocket went. And this you can program with any old computer and it's free. The software is for it. Wow. That's so cool. So I love how you've taken hobbies and everything you love to do and are super passionate about and uh, made money out of it, but also have fun with it. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. It's going to, I mean, those are the kind of things that are going to take you a lot farther if you really enjoy doing it. And, you know, that's how he's learned how to do all this stuff is he just, you know, he's just taught himself and looked online and, you know, he figured out how to do it just from, um, just from having little ideas of projects he wants to do and then not letting anything stop him and just figuring out how to make it happen. So I love that, Mike. That's so cool. <laughs> so awesome. Well, we'll have to keep in touch with all these projects you're working on, but uh, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, like we said earlier, we're going to have all this stuff and my website will have all the resources that Mike talked about. So if you want to start learning how to program or do this electronic stuff or make the little Doctor Who thing, you can go there and all the resources will be there. So anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.